Hey guys, and welcome back for today's video where I want to go over some new polling data that was just recently released from Ipsos. It's showing a very competitive race at the top between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. They also asked a number of other interesting questions that I want to go over. And we actually have been seeing some changes in the overall average of the national polls over the past couple of weeks. And it's starting to show a much more competitive race between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders than where we were in the earlier portion of December. So going over and taking a look at the average from Real Clear Politics, and they take the credible national polls or the more credible national polls anyways, they average them out. And what we were seeing in the earlier portion of December was Biden had around a 12 to 13 percentage point lead over Sanders, but that has closed to now being a situation where it's around an eight percentage point lead for Joe Biden. And the Sanders camp has to feel good about the fact that their average in the national polls is at its highest point now since essentially before Joe Biden entered the race very early on. Sanders was averaging in the lower 20 percentage point range. Then Biden made his announcement. Sanders dipped down to the middle teens area and has more or less been hovering a little bit above that throughout this process. But now Sanders is getting really close to around 20 percent with the average of the national polls. And basically, what his campaign is trying to do is get things as close as possible to Biden nationally before heading into those early caucus and primary results where they feel like they have a really good chance at having a lot of success in states right out of the gate like Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. And if Sanders is able to do really well and maybe even perhaps win those first three results, it changes the narrative and is likely to be a situation where it closes this gap even further and makes a really competitive race at the top. There's no national primary. So essentially, these numbers mean something in terms of where the nation is at a whole. But since the caucus and primary season is done state by state and over the course of a number of months, it means that things can clearly change based on those results that we get as campaigns build or lose momentum. So it's definitely an important benchmark, but since there is no national primary, this isn't the end-all be-all. We'll see how things shift around as we start getting those results in the early caucus and primary states. Now I want to go back over and take a look at this Ipsos poll. Now you might be asking yourself, why are the top tier candidates not polling quite as high in this one? And that's because they gave the option of don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. I wish that they would at least push these individuals to say who they're leaning towards. And with this don't know at 29%, these are more than likely individuals that would probably be casting their ballot for somebody like a Biden, Sanders, or Warren at the top of the ticket. In this instance, they just didn't want to commit to who they're having as their top choice at this point in time. But we see Biden leading the way at 18%. Sanders right there, very competitive at 15 percentage points. And this sample size was around 700 or so voters. We can see Elizabeth Warren in third place at 10 percentage points. And then everyone else is in the mid to lower single digits with Bloomberg at 5%. Pete Buttigieg there at 4%. And then everyone else is at two percentage points or less. Now going down and seeing the second choice option, and we can see it's extremely close, essentially a three-way tie between Biden, Warren, and Sanders, who are at 17, 16, and 16 percentage points, respectively, with the second choice in Bloomberg being at 8%, along with Pete Buttigieg. And then we get these head-to-head -head matchups between these upper-tier Democratic hopefuls and their general election against Donald Trump. And we can see Biden defeating Trump 39% to 35%, so a four-point lead. Bernie Sanders also with a four-point lead, 40%, and actually Sanders... In the combination here, of course, they're counting Democrats, independents, and Republicans in this head-to-head -head matchup. We can see Sanders at the highest number of 40 percentage points, but still relatively close there with Biden, who was at 39. Also, Trump did just slightly better in this head-to-head -head matchup compared to his head-to-head -head against Biden, but still a four percentage point gap there. Sanders at 40, Trump at 36. Things start getting a little bit closer here with Elizabeth Warren, where she's at 38 percent, and Trump's at 36 and then we can see Pete Buttigieg losing to Trump 35% to 36%. And then Michael Bloomberg has a one percentage point lead over Trump, 36 to 35. So we see this a lot in these national polls head to head where in general, Bernie and Biden are the strongest of the Democratic hopefuls in that matchup. And that's been pretty consistent from what we've seen. And maybe not a huge surprise considering that Bernie and Biden have the highest approval numbers in, or favorability in general amongst voters, as well as the highest name recognition. So that can also help them in those head-to-head -head matchups with Donald Trump. But then they start diving into the issues, and these are some really interesting things. So the first question that they asked here is, which candidate do you think would be the best on immigration? Pretty close and competitive there at the top with Sanders at 18 points and Biden at 17. 
They asked who is the best on healthcare, and this is something we also consistently see where Bernie Sanders is the best among Democratic voters, where they have him at 27%, Biden at 18 and Warren at 12%. And also the fact that the candidates who are more so pushing Medicare for all combine at 39%, while the candidates who are pushing for things like a public option, if you add up their percentage points, you get 18 plus 5 is 23. And then with Cory Booker here, plus 2 would be 25 so essentially, the Medicare for All group is clearly showing a lot more support among the Democratic voters and who they think uh, these candidates are the best on health care, as opposed to the uh, options that are a bit more centrist in nature. And then we take a look on the best at, on the environment. Sanders leads the way at 22 percent, Warren at 13 and Biden at 12 And then the economy and jobs. Sanders does the best here again at 22 percent, Biden at 18 Warren at 14. And then the most likely to defeat Donald Trump, and this is where Biden tends to do his best. We see that here where he's at 31%, Sanders at 17, Warren at 10. And then a strong progressive. This is a, not a big surprise that Sanders there at 24%, Warren at 17, and then Biden at 13. Can unite the party? Biden leading that one at 22, Sanders at 15, Warren at 14. And then a new and different voice is very competitive there at the top with Sanders at 18, along with Elizabeth Warren at 18, Buttigieg at 15, and Joe Biden at 10 percentage points. And those are all the different things that I want to touch on. So essentially everything related to policy, Sanders was the top choice among these individuals. But then the questions of unifying the party as well as the best head-to-head -head against Donald Trump is where Biden did his best. So we're getting a situation, it feels like, where voters might be going towards Biden because they feel like he has a better chance to defeat Donald Trump more so than where they ideologically align, where if that was more the case, then Sanders would probably be doing a little bit better in the overall number of first choices. But when we take a look at that head-to-head -head matchup between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, as well as Joe Biden and Donald Trump, it was a situation here where they were both leading him by about four percentage points, if I can find those numbers. Okay, so here we go. It was Biden 39 to Trump at 35, and then Sanders was 40% to Trump, who was at 36. And this is what we're pretty much consistently seeing across the board in these national polls, where Sanders is doing just as well head-to-head -head against Trump. And I feel like his campaign should start doing a little bit better of a job of conveying this message that they defeat Trump. That's what the polls are suggesting, and maybe bringing that up a bit more could help them in that key area where they might be having their issues in terms of trying to win over those uh, particular voters who feel like that is the most important thing when picking a candidate. So that's going to wrap up this video, guys. And again, if you want to take a look at this data for yourself, I'll link it down at the bottom of the video description. I appreciate you stopping by. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hope to see you guys back here for my next video.